Good morning and good day to you brothers and sisters. Gonna show you something cool as always. Welcome back to my series uh, Raptured from the Curse, the Seventh Bold Judgment. Um, this is gonna be number five in the series. I hope you've watched the other four first. The last one was Zechariah 9. We've done what? Uh, Revelation 16, Isaiah 24, Revelation 19, uh, Zechariah 9, and I was going to do Zechariah 14 next, but as I was flipping the pages in route to Zechariah 14, I stumbled upon uh, Malachi chapter 3 and saw the exact same words and phrasing in Malachi 3 as I saw in Zechariah 9 in reference to the rapture. So the Holy Spirit, I believe, told me, you know what, this matches it. Keep everybody's uh, thought process going here. If anyone follows you, and, and as far as all this, the uh, lessons in this series, and do Malachi 3 next. So that's what, that's what I'm doing. Now, what is, this series, what is this series about if this is the first lesson in this uh, group that that you've watched of mine. Well, these, all of these in this series is about this seventh bowl. Nobody seems to know anything about the seventh bowl. We've got the five verses there in Revelation 16. Uh, we think it's the last day of the age, the battle of Armageddon. You know, you don't see it there in uh, Revelation 16 that the Lord's returning other than, what is it, Revelation 16, 15, I believe, where, that you have red letters, and which tells me Jesus is returning at the seventh bowl, but a lot of Christians say, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's red letters. Behold, I'm coming as a thief. And, I mean, it's obvious to me, but it's not obvious to everybody for some reason. So, uh, all of these lessons, it could be 20, 25, 30, however many chapters we do in this series all talk about the rapture judgment day on the last day of the age it's going to answer all those questions for you at the seventh bowl every one of these are seven bowl chapters throughout the entire holy bible so you never have to wonder well what's going on at the seventh bowl revelation 16 didn't tell us a whole lot it's all throughout scripture, brothers and sisters. And if you watch the one, the last one, uh, lesson number four on Zechariah 9, you're going to see the same information here in Malachi 3. All right, let's get started. Malachi 3, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Now, is this father referring to Jesus as the messenger? No. This is father referring to e the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah was in John the Baptist. The spirit of Elijah, you can say, possessed the body of John the Baptist. He did. And guess what? We learn here in Malachi 3 and Malachi 4, the last two chapters of the entire Old Testament, that Father is sending the spirit of Elijah back to earth again to prepare the way of the Lord. Now, is Jesus coming back or is Father coming back? Have you ever thought about that? Are you sure you understand? Jesus it glorified body is returning but father's spirit is in him and if you go to revelation 19 which was the what third lesson of this series you saw that the lord god omnipotent reigns i mean this is father himself reigning during the millennium and then you're you know a lot of people think well or they question themselves. I thought Jesus was reigning during the millennium. Well, Jesus does reign in the millennium. He does. But it's the spirit of Father in him that's truly in charge and reigning. Jesus will tell you that himself. This is Father coming to earth. He needs to be in a physical 
glorified body so he can touch you, so he can hug you, so he can uh, love on you, so he can sit down and have a meal with you, so he can sit and sing with you or watch you sing. All right? And he could, he could use the vocal cords of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't make it hard. But Elijah is being sent back to earth again. When is Elijah being sent back during the last seven years of this age prior to Judgment Day? Judgment Day is the seventh bowl, last day of the age. That's the day that you are getting raptured if you belong to him, if you abide in the vine. And he knows who you are. You have a personal relationship with Jesus and Father's Spirit. All right? That's the day of your rapture. If you don't believe me, if you watch all of these lessons in this series, the Bible will speak for itself, and you will see that the rapture occurs on the last day, the seventh bowl, judgment day, the return of Christ. And then, of course, the next obvious question is, well, what are we being raptured from? We've been through all the trumpets we've been through six bowls now we are at the seventh bowl the last day of the age day 1335 following the abomination of desolation and the minute you start mentioning how long countdowns you'll watch christians just start growing horns i call them the lazy horns here come the lazy horns wait a minute brother you're digging too deep Father said, no man know the day or the hour, so we're not even supposed to read those sort of passages. Ooh, shame on you for reading the how long countdowns, the 2300, the 1290, the 1335, the 1260, and the other prophecies like a year and some days. And the prophecies of Isaiah 20, Egypt and Ethiopia will walk barefoot and naked following the king of the north and king of the south final battle at the river Euphrates. They'll walk naked for three years until the return of Christ. Don't try to put that into your 70th week of Daniel timeline. Shame on you. No man knoweth the day or the hour. Well, how about this, brother? How about you take them lazy horns that you just grew and just push them right back into your skull. Push them right back down there. And how about reading God's Word? Well, I don't have to read God's Word because I read that passage that says, No man knoweth the day or the hour, so that I'm covered. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, don't say people like me are twisting the Scriptures. How about we read the Scriptures together and let Father's Word tell us when we are to know the day and the hour? Did you know? That the Bible tells you when you are permitted to know the day and the hour? Has anyone ever showed you that? People probably tried, but you stopped them dead in the tracks. Whoa there, brother, we're not supposed to know the day or the hour. How dare you even act like we can? Brothers and sisters, it tells you right there in Daniel chapter 8. Once the worthy lamb looses the first seal, you know exactly to the day when your bridegroom cometh. It's 2,300 days following the abomination of desolation. Excuse me. Let me back up correct myself. It's 2,300 days following the crowning of the Antichrist at the first seal. That's what Daniel 8 tells you. It does? Yes, it does. Daniel 8 verses 23 through 25 tells you the start the middle and the ending to the 2,300 day how long countdown prophecy. It sure does. Daniel 8.23 matches Daniel 11.21 when the vile one is crowned, he comes in peaceably, seizes the kingdom by intrigue, he shall arise, he gets crowned, it matches the first seal of the book of Revelation, but he's not revealed. Well, he could be crowned king of the caliphate and not be revealed he's not revealed until satan possesses his body at the fifth seal that's daniel 11 verses uh, uh 29 through 40 the fifth seal when he proclaims to be the god of gods after spending 30 days proclaiming to be the messiah the mahdi you need to get in your Bibles, brothers and sisters. 
Yes, we are permitted to know the day. Once. Once. Don't say I'm saying that we're allowed to know it now. I'm saying once the worthy lamb looses the first seal. That's what Daniel 8, 23 through 25 tells you. Matches Daniel 11, 21 and the rest of Daniel 11. And how does the 2300 day countdown end? When Jesus, Almighty God, shows his face and he is, he is revealed in the air. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? When he's revealed in the air, all right, and fights the battle of Armageddon using his army, which is, believe it or not, church, it's you. Oh, it's the angels. No Revelation 19, and we proved it in all of these other lessons so far, if you just stick with me, that the ones who are dressed in fine linen, clean and bright, are the ones doing the fighting. We see in Revelation 19 that Jesus' robe is dipped in blood. But guess what we saw in Zechariah 9? His army's robes are dipped in blood too. So much so that they look like they've been drinking wine all night. That's in Zechariah 9? Yes, brothers and sisters, see my last lesson. Lesson number four in this series. This is lesson number five. Oh, by the way, we know exactly how many days that Jesus will be revealed after Lucifer is revealed at the fifth seal. Did you know that? It's in Daniel 12. Been there the whole time. Jesus is revealed 1,335 days following the revealing at the abomination of desolation in the temple in Jerusalem of Lucifer. To the day. It's always been there. He he even goes one step further. Father tells you when the seventh trumpet's going to be blown 45 days earlier. Day 1,290 days. That matches Daniel 7. The court in heaven reaches a verdict, and Elijah and Moses raise from the dead, and the kingdom has been granted to the saints. They've been awarded to them. Daniel chapter 7. That's occurs at the seventh trumpet blast when Elijah and Moses raised from the dead in the great Jerusalem earthquake. And all and all the nations of the earth except for the Babylonian uh, Islamic State, just about every other nation goes, uh-oh, we've been fighting on the wrong side. They send out ambassadors, envoys, messengers to the nations. They set up a banner, da -da -da -da, attack Babylon the Great. Who's that? It's Baghdad. How do you know it's Baghdad again in the latter days? Because Revelation 18.21 matches Jeremiah 51 uh, verses 62 through 64. Matches it and even names the river of Babylon the Great in the last days. It's still Baghdad. Father wasn't trying to throw you a curveball. That's where their headquarters will be set up. Well, does it tell us what city the Antichrist will come from? Yes, it always has. It's in Nahum chapter 1. The vile one from the vile city of Nineveh shall be your wicked counselor. You get what you deserve. Matches Daniel eleven twenty one. Been there the whole time. Mosul, Iraq. It's an Islamic state caliphate. Becoming a beast kingdom. Who are the ten horns? Ten kings. Well, what nations do they represent? They don't. That's where we've been blown it, brothers and sisters. They don't rep represent nations. They have no kingdom as of yet. Well, then who are the ten kings that have no kingdom as of yet? You ready? ISIS? Uh, Hamas? Hezbollah? Um, Taliban? Boko Haram? Lakshay Taba? Uh, what else? There's more. Al-Shabaab? They're going to unite when the Antichrist starts working miracles at the fifth seal, brothers and sisters. Then you're going to turn this into a bee's kingdom. And eventually at the sixth trumpet, which is Daniel 11, 44 and 45, and the siege of Jerusalem for 430 days begins and won't un end until the seventh bowl when Jesus returns. Almighty God himself in the glorified body of Jesus Christ to render judgment and you get rescued from that judgment pre-tribbers weren't right post-tribbers weren't right i say they weren't right because they say it's not a rapture it is a rescuing rapture you're being rescued from the refiner's fire the wrath of the lamb the plague of the furnace of fire 
the truth was somewhere in the middle. Quit fighting, brothers and sisters. It's a rapture, and it's at the seventh bowl, battle of Armageddon, when Jesus appears and sends forth his angels to gather the elect. Well, I thought all the saints are coming with him from heaven. Only those souls who sleep in Christ come from the third heaven throne room of God with Jesus and his angels. But the meat takes place in the air. Ezekiel 37, those dry bones come to life. And you actually get to witness Jesus descending, breaking through the atmosphere for a few seconds, and then lift up your head because your redemption is nigh. Boom! In a twinkling of an eye, you're up there on top of that supercell storm cloud with them. And then guess what? That's where the armory of the Lord is going to take place, in that broad place of Psalm 18 above the storm cloud. You mount up on your chariot of fire, or chariot of Israel. That's your white horse. It's not a horsey. It's a mode of transportation. It's a fighting platform. Come on, brothers and sisters. This is best novel you ever read and it's all about your true future but yet you leave it let it collect dust on the shelf because the preacher on Sunday just ain't interesting enough so this must not be interesting it's all about ancient Israel this is your future brothers and sisters this is your baby's future and it's only a few years away how can you not read it <laughs> hallelujah let's get into Malachi chapter 3 that's only a half cup of coffee here we go. Behold, I send my messenger Elijah, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek. We're talking about those during the second half of the 70th week of Daniel. Believe me, everybody's going, how long, Lord? How before Jesus turns? The pre-tribbers said he was supposed to already take us away. The mid-trib pre-wrath folks said that we should have been out by now. We're still here. I don't see anybody disappearing. I don't see any clothes on the ground. How long, Lord? They're seeking him. People in Israel have done burned all the holy Bibles and killed most of the Christians. They can't, they, now they're wishing they hadn't. Maybe there's some truth to the holy Bible. We need to find one. How long, Lord? They're seeking him. Seeking his word. They can't find it. There'll be a famine for the word. They done burned all the Bibles in the Middle East to include Israel. But the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come upon you and come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. The glorified body of Jesus, Father, will come suddenly. Matthew 24, like lightning comes from the east to the west. He will come to his temple in Jerusalem. This is not the tabernacle of David, that's the millennial temple, all right? So think more, think of this more of him coming to Jerusalem suddenly, in whom you delight. This is not the start of the day of the Lord, the invisible presence of Almighty God. This is the appearing of Jesus with Father's Spirit in him. You could physically, standing on terra firma, look up and see his face. He's that close. He has descended with his bride and his angels. All right. Look up. Now, these people look up if the glorification has just taken place and they're still standing on the ground in their physical body looking up, but they're happy to see him, unlike the Muslims who took the mark of the Antichrist. All right. Caliph. Or Mahdi, they're not going to be so happy, these Babylonian cities. They know they're in trouble. They were wrong all along. But is this the glorified saints? Well, for the first few seconds or minutes, however Jesus does it, when you're looking up and you see him coming on that supercell storm cloud, you're going to delight. But once you're glorified, is there going to be any people who didn't take the mark left on earth? who are not saved, will not get glorified? Will there still be people standing in their man of dust bodies looking up who don't take the mark? Yes, plenty of them, and a lot of Jewish blood too. They're gonna to be slaves, most of them, building up the Babylonian cities, especially in Baghdad. 
They're going to be slaves, but they didn't take the mark, but they were permitted to live as slave labor. That's how it's going to work, brothers and sisters. There's going to be plenty of people left. Well, I say plenty of people. <laughs> There's going to be few people left on the planet alive after this night. By morning, there'll be few people left. We saw that in, uh, what, Isaiah 24. The whole earth is not being burned up. It's going to seem like it, though. All right, let's finish Malachi 3, verse 2. But who can endure the day of his coming? <clears throat> he does not come to start the day of the Lord. Yes, Isaiah 2 matches Revelation 6. That's the start of the day of the Lord. The seismic activity, the tornadic activity, the signs in the sun and moon. All right, Amos 8. It's his invisible presence. In other words, everybody on the planet knows that the creator of the universe is here. You can't see him. It's invisible presence. Everybody claims it's their own God. But you know this stuff isn't normal that's happening. This is Almighty God, whoever he is. We know who he is. They think they know who he is. But that's his invisible presence. But it climaxes. The day of the Lord climaxes with the revealing of God. The body of glorified Jesus with Father Spirit in him. They can physically see him. They can see the bride. They can see the angels. Run for your life. Unless you exalt at his, uh, or you rejoice at his exaltation. But you weren't glorified. But now you understand and you didn't take the mark so you're not totally ashamed. All right. You will rejoice. And who can stand when he appears? This is the seventh bowl appearing. Remember, behold, I come as a thief in red letters. What is it? Revelation 16, 15, I believe. For he is like a refiner's fire. This is the wrath that you are not appointed for. Well, I thought it was the wrath of God trumpets or the wrath of God bowls. No, brothers and sisters, if you turn to 2 Thessalonians 1, 8... Just a few inches to the right of 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, you would have seen the wrath that you are not appointed for. It's not the trumpets. It's not the first six bowls. It's the seventh bowl. The seventh time around the city on the seventh day, if you will. That should sound familiar. All right. That's the wrath of the Lamb. At the start of the day of the Lord in the book of Revelation, at the last two verses of Revelation 6, when we start the day of the Lord, he said, this is the wrath of him who sits on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb, meaning that the climax, the last day, is the wrath of the Lamb when Jesus shows up in person with Father Spirit in him. Are you with me? That's the wrath of the Lamb. That's what you're being raptured from. It's a refiner's fire most of the earth to include our sky is going to be lit on fire why because of a lot of things remember you've got consuming trampling and threshing going on this night why don't I say day well because there's verses in the Bible that says Jesus will appear right as the sun goes down oh come on brother now I know you're smoking something we're not supposed to know the day or the hour. Don't tell me for the last two, three thousand years that the Bible, the Holy Bible, has always told us the hour of our Lord's return. Well, within a few minutes, he always has. It's always been there. No man knows the day or the hour. Right. You know the hour, you don't know the day. But when will you know the day? When the first seal is loosed by the worthy Lamb. Revelation 3 3 says, But those who watch, I won't come upon you as a thief. Why? Because you spend hundreds or thousands of hours at the feet of Jesus reading his letters that he wrote to you. Not going to take you a surprise. I'm not going to surprise you, I guess I should say. You know. You watch. Brother, if you're right, I'm going to be pretty upset at all of my teachers over the years. Well, I don't want you to be upset at him. I want you to help your pastor. I don't want you to be mad at him. He loves you. I've never showed you any love, but he has. Day, week after week, month after month, he's shown you and your family love. All right? He saved your souls. I have never saved your soul. He saved your souls. 
all right he wed your children he went to their he buried the dead of your family love your pastor he was taught wrong in seminary love on him but go to your deacons go to your bishops train them meet with your pastor show him these verses in the Bible all right some pastors are starting to come around now but they try to just stay away from it well don't stay away from the 70th week of Daniel we need to talk about it more than ever we're going to be here throughout the day of the Lord the last half of the 70th week of Daniel we're going to be here we've got a mission you need to learn what that mission is Revelation 6 11 Revelation 12 11 Revelation 24 we've got a mission Get ready for it. It's going to be hard, but the Lord will be out there to those who love him and have faith and flee from the wicked. Well, I thought the flight just in Jerusalem and Israel. No, brothers and sisters, the whirlwind of the Lord, the invisible presence of Almighty God is going to go throughout the earth. Jeremiah 25 tells you all kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth will drink of the cup of madness during the entire day of the Lord. Its length is 945 days from the best that I can ascertain. Well, how did you come up with that? Well, see my timeline. I used all the how long countdowns and all the prophecies that I could find in Isaiah and Jeremiah and others. Remember, we're going to read in Malachi 4 whenever we ever get there. This is Malachi 3's lesson, but when we get to Malachi 4, Father tells you, I'm sending Elijah and Moses, the other witness, in case you didn't know, Zechariah 4 and the Transfiguration chapters prove that, and Malachi 4 prove that it's Moses. He's bringing back the law of Moses to accuse Israel. But Zechariah 4 proves that it is Moses all along, just like we kind of suspected. How? Because he tells you it's the two, the two anointed ones that stand beside the Lord. Those are my two witnesses. Have you not read the Transfiguration chapters? Who stand on each side of Jesus as he's glorified before the three disciples? You can just picture your father smacking his head going, Whew, I thought I made them a little brighter than this. <laughs> wow, they're not getting it. All right, brothers, I apologize. Here we go. The refiner's fire. This is the wrath of the Lamb, the plague of the furnace of fire. Well, where at in Scripture does it talk about the wrath we're not appointed for? Zechariah 14, 12, 2 Thessalonians 1, 8. Uh, where else? Matthew 13, verses 42 and 50. St. Peter 3, verses 10 through 12. That's the wrath you're not appointed for in the seventh bowl, the refiner's fire. All right, it's judgment day. Are nukes going to be launched? Yes. How do you know that? Jeremiah 49, 38. Oh, the Lord's sending fire. All right. All right. I don't know if the angel of the Lord appears before the Iranian generals or he just possesses their minds, but he will destroy from there Elam, which is the southwest corner of Iran always has been and is today. It's not spelt spelled E-L-A-M anymore. It's spelled I-L-A-M. It's a mountain range where their nuclear program is in southwest Iran. You can find it on Google Earth today. Jeremiah 49, 38 is talking about the last days, day of the Lord. At the tail end of it, when Jesus appears and fire and brimstone is being blown from his nostrils and lobs shooting up out of the cracked earth, at the seventh bowl, in addition to all that, guess what? Baghdad's about to go 90-90. Why? Because Iran's getting some payback. Now they realize the apostle Jesus is more than that. He's, he's God in the flesh. Now they realize it and they launch. Now I'm not sure exactly how many cities they nuke with small tactical nukes that night. I'm sure the Lord doesn't want the whole atmosphere just full of radiation. We've got a lot of man of dust bodies that got to repopulate the earth that we're going to reign over. But some nukes are going to be launched. 
Have you not read all the passages that say that certain Babylonian cities, not all of them, certain ones will be so desolate and it'll never, ever, ever be inhabited again? Not at all throughout the millennium. Why? Because it's like Chernobyl. You can't go near it. Baghdad's one of them. Revelation 17 and 18 explained that. Stand back. Hiss from her plagues. Whoa, don't go near her. Why? Because she's burning? No. Because she's smoking, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 49, 38. Check it out. You might find Zechariah 5 interesting along those lines, too. <coughs> All right. Verse 2, but who can endure the day of his coming, seventh bowl, and who can stand when he appears, seventh bowl, for he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap, he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, and they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Oh, he's just purifying Israel. Brothers and sisters, I hope you watched my last lesson. If so, I proved to you who Zion is, who the blessed is, who the elect is, who the daughter of who the daughters of Israel are, who the daughters of Zion are, who the sons and daughters of Jerusalem are. It's Zion. It's the elect, the church. How did you prove that, brother? I went to Galatians 3 and proved it. Why don't you go read Galatians 3, then read the rest of Galatians, Romans, and Hebrews. All right? Those who are in Christ are in the seed, capital S, of Abraham, and are sons of Abraham. The church is sons of Abraham, the true Zion, the true daughters and sons of Israel. Really? It says that? I thought I read Galatians 3. Go back and read it again, brothers and sisters. I hope you watched the last lesson on Zechariah 9. That they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old. Okay, now we're talking about the millennium. And I will come near you for judgment. That's the seventh bowl. Day 1,335, following the fifth seal, abomination of desolation, I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans. People will read that, widows and orphans, but they don't like to read. Business owners don't like to read exploit wage earners. Don't get me started, brothers and sisters. Oh, that they'll deserve more than seven twenty-five an hour. Oh, really? Oh, really? You're going to answer for that on Judgment Day, brothers and sisters, while you're going on your second family vacation for the year, and you've got the third car, and you just bought a boat? Well, I earned it fair and square. Yeah, by the sweat of those people right there. You got something to answer for. I'm just trying to warn you. And against those who turn away and alien. Ooh, what does that mean? Anybody who wants to enter the country can? No. Would that, isn't that what that says? No. How do you know? Second, I think it's 2 John. Is it 2 John 1.10? Turn there real quick. I'm not against immigration. I'm against illegal immigration. But, obviously I want as many Christians in my country as I can get. I don't care what nationality, what race they are. As long as they're the family of God, but be careful. Oh, 2 John 1.10, or 2 John verse 10, there's only what, one chapter? Read that. You're not even supposed to give the greeting of the day to anyone who doesn't carry the doctrine of Christ. If they carry some doctrine other than Christ, I'm not talking about necessarily about atheists or people who just aren't sure, but if they carry a doctrine other than Christ, you don't let them in your hood, in your house, in your schools, and you don't even greet them. Second John, verse 10. Well, we're going to ignore that passage. I'm sure God didn't mean that. Whoever penned it must have made a mistake. Every verse in the entire Bible is written by the same entity. It's Father. This is Father's doing the entire Bible. I don't care who penned it. 
because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Remember, when you read verses like that, we're talking about the sons of Abraham. And Galatians 3 said it's the church, it's the bride of Christ. That's who true sons of Abraham and Jacob are. Not necessarily the people in Israel today. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances. You have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. What is the tithes and offerings for? So the preacher can go and, and buy his fifth tailor-made suit, or maybe buy himself a jet, or add another wing on to the church, or replace the church carpet every year. No, the tithes and offerings are for what was written in verse, we just read it. Verse 5, it's for widows, orphans, the poor who are in need. That's who it's for. Try me now on this. In other words, try me. And you're going to be blessed or cursed based on the works that you do. Especially when it comes to my tithes that are brought into the storehouse. Whoever sits in those meetings and, and determines how that money is going to be spent that's brought into your church, you better be careful. you got to answer for it, committee. Well, there's, it's a committee, so not one of us is actually responsible. How you vote is going to be judged. But I would really like to go to England this year on a missionary trip. I want to win souls while I take tours. Really. Be careful, brothers and sisters. Be careful. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Who's the devourer? The Antichrist. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. This is some clues on what nations outside of the Middle East might fare well during the day of the Lord and which ones may not. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land. Says the Lord of hosts, your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. So here are some verses reminding Israel that while you're waiting on your Messiah, all right, you might want to live right and pay attention to your works. What have you spoken? What have we spoken against you, Lord? You have said, this is Father telling them, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? Now don't start falling asleep here, brothers and sisters, because these last three or four verses of Malachi 3 are awesome and talk about your rapture. So put your thinking caps on and wake up. We're getting to the highlighted verses, all right? You have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the proud blessed for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Here we go, brothers and sisters. Verse 16, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them, so a book of remembrance was written before him. There is such a thing as a book of remembrance. He pays attention to what you speak in your conversations with others. Do you fear God? Do you talk about Jesus? Do you remind each other to behave, to act right? Or are you someone who encourages your co-worker to go party? I got this club you got to check out. Which one are you? Are you the co-worker that's trying to invite them to church? Hey, we got this cool thing going on at church tonight on Wednesday night. Why don't you come with me? I'll pick you up about 
Or are you the ones going, Friday night, I know where we're going. Woo! Is your husband cool with it? Ah, he'll be all right. We'll get home before midnight. I, the Lord listens to your conversation. Yes, he knows your heart, but he also listens and he writes it down in your favor when you talk to other people about uh, the plan of salvation, about God's plan, about his love and how good he is. All right, he's trying to decide which one of you he wants to spend eternity with and which ones he doesn't. If you had that kind of power, wouldn't you pick and choose? Remember, Father is the final vine dresser. Your faith is not good enough. It is initially, but over time, you've signed a new covenant labor agreement to serve God. To serve God. Are you serving Him? Well, I just love Him and I have strong faith. And put a hundred in the plate every week. Not good enough, brothers and sisters. It's a labor agreement. What part of that did you not understand? It's all over the Bible. He's going to judge your works. Oh, that's just to see what how big my crown is. Oh, really? Oh, really? You're going to be in for a sad surprise, brothers and sisters. John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 13, make it clear that you can lose your salvation with long periods of persistent, persistent unfaithfulness and laziness and not working for him. It's not about how much money you put in the plate. It's how much time you spent doing whatever mission he gives you. Do you know what your mission is? Your personal mission? Have you ever asked him? All right here we go. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name, verse 17, they shall be mine. Whoa, you mean he just told us who's getting raptured? And who doesn't have to be burned up with that refiner's fire, wrath of the Lamb? plague of the furnace of fire for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name read the Bible every day pray several times a day all right not a week a day who make time for him to love him too long for his coming oh you give anything if he'd just come tomorrow but then there's others that go well you know Lord 20 sounds about right I want life I want to watch my children grow up no, I, uh, and then when I hit 60, I'll probably go on some mission trips. Uh, but right now, you know, I'm supposed to get this next pay raise, and I'm really looking forward to that vacation to the Bahamas. And things are going pretty good right now, Lord. So you do what you do, I'll do what I'll do, and I'll see you in 20 years. Oh, really? Or do you long, pray, give anything if he would just come today or tomorrow? Of course, we got family members we want to see get saved. I understand that. I do. I do. Those who are those are the ones getting raptured. On the day that I make them my jewels. This verse right here is why we came to Malachi 3 following Zechariah 9. We just saw who gets raptured in Zechariah 9, and they get lifted above the land like a banner of jewels. All right, these are the glorified bodies of the saints on rapture day, the seventh bowl. On the day of the refiner's fire, we read about in verse 2. The, this is the rapture. On the day that I make them my jewels, I will spare them. That doesn't mean I'm getting raptured from the day of the Lord before or raptured at the start of the 70th week of Daniel three and a half years earlier or seven years earlier from this day. I will spare them means from the wrath of the Lamb on the last day, judgment day. That's what the rapture is. It's a rescuing rapture from the wrath of the Lamb, the furnace of fire. I gave you all the verses that talk about it. Matthew 13 and 2 Thessalonians 1 and 2 Peter 3. All right. We read all those. We talked about all those. I will spare them from the refiner's fire. As a man spares his own son who serves him. Get it? It's a labor agreement. Stomp, stomp. Hint, hint. And you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Then you. 
will know the difference between the wheat and the tares. It's those who serve Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. The follower, people who say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Well, do you work for him? Do you labor for him? I love him. I have faith. There's passages that say, all I need is faith. <laughs> yeah, to get into the family, but to stay into the family, John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, and Matthew 13. Matthew 13 tells you all about the great falling away when the Antichrist shows up, and all the love for the brethren has gone cold. People give up, but they don't know when Jesus is coming, and the, and the Antichrist is here, and he's working miracles and doing a lot of healings. He's not raising Elijah and Moses from the dead, but he's doing a lot of healings and miracles. And you can't buy any food for your children unless you pledge allegiance to him. Are you sure you're going to hold out till Jesus returns on the last day, seventh bowl? Are you sure? What about when the knife's at the back of your neck? Revelation 20, verse 4. You need to know when your Lord is coming. It will strengthen your faith and help you endure to the end. Even as you watch your children die at your campsite out in the wilderness, as you see all this happening, you will not lose faith because you know exactly what day is coming. But, brother, we're not supposed to know. Well, you will know when the worthy lamb looses the first seal. If you miss that, you're not sure it was the right king in the Islamic world that got crowned? Okay, when the abomination of desolation takes place, you'll know. Hopefully, if we got news, if we got newspaper, maybe here in America we won't. We may be running for our lives, no electricity. All right, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. The chapter ends just like that, talking about the rapture. You need to pay attention to these verses about the rapture. Who's the wheat and who's the tares? Does it talk necessarily only about the mark of the beast? No, the mark of the beast is definitely the tares. You will be burned this night if you're still alive, tares. But when it comes to which one of the non-marked ones get to become jewels lifted above the land and glorified bodies, you might want to pay attention to these comments these verses that talk about those who fear the Lord who think about him every day serve him every month every week maybe every day you might want to turn pay attention to those verses we might do uh, Malachi 4 next and get a better handle on what Elijah's mission is but we're only doing verses in this series brothers and sisters that talk about the seventh bowl return of Christ you're going to be amazed at how many passages in the Holy Bible talk about the seventh bowl. Brothers and sisters, I hope this series and this particular lesson in Malachi 3 has been a blessing to you. And I can't wait to see you next time. God bless.